Welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. My name is Michael Humlet and I'm the founder of Chaomatic. And in this show, we discuss all topics sales and marketing to accelerate your business way faster. One of the questions that keeps popping up and every single day, it's about the art of cold calling. So I thought, let's ask an expert. Philip, tell our viewers what you do. I uh, work on uh, outbound telemarketing projects, uh, two main uh, main axes. One, I coach and train inside sales teams mm-hmm. uh, to improve on, on cold calling. On cold calling, uh, of course. Yeah. And uh, we also work on uh, outsourcing projects for telemarketing. Yeah, so, so you what have your own companies business. Do not do or do not want to do themselves. We outsource it to our team of inside sales experts. So let's start with some tough questions I always get. Mm. One. GDPR means okay. you can't do cold calling anymore. Uh, I think on the contrary. Don't, don't do two hours on GDPR. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so yeah. always consult a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in terms of GDPR, uh, actually uh, GDPR is, is, I think, good for, uh, for cold calling and uh, acquisition by phone. Because indeed, as of May uh, 25th, you can no longer send cold e- emails to, uh, to prospects, mm-hmm. that's out of the question, that, that's for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but for cold calling, actually nothing changed. Uh, emailing has become an opt-in yeah, system since thing. GDPR, indeed. Yeah. But uh, for cold calling, there's always been the uh, do not call me registers exactly. in, uh, in exactly. most European countries, which are opt-out lists. So but you have to... Nothing changed in essence. Uh, no, you have to uh, uh, opt out of being called for marketing purposes and that did not change. Mm-hmm. So looking forward as of May, uh, May 25th of 2018, uh, if companies still want to do uh, acquisition, which I assume everybody <laughs> wants, to, wants to continue. It's the name of the game, yeah. Um, being the fact that um, uh, email acquisition can no longer be done uh, without prior opt-in. Mm-hmm. I think uh, that cold calling is absolutely not that. I wanted uh, to ask you. On the contrary, yeah. um, if, one, if, if sending cold emails is no longer allowed, I think, and I think the numbers will be, will be coming in by the end of the year, uh, there are some, some uh, studies uh, that exist, uh, I think it will be, uh, you will see a shift towards more Outbound uh, and cold calling. Because there's a, there's a yeah. nuance between cold calling and outbound calling. We have to. Okay, uh, I'll get there straight. So I, I've seen the amount of questions that get to me okay. rise very dramatically, mm-hmm. actually. So I do feel there is a shift in the market yeah. and you do see that there is a lot of confusion also. So one of the things I wanted to do today is talk about what you just said. What's the difference between cold calling, inbound calling, and then let's, let's look into the structure of such a call. Mm-hmm. So. What's the difference between cold calling and inbound calling, Philip? Well, cold calling for me is, is something that you do on typically uh, lower value volume items like telecom and utilities type of, uh, type of contracts, which mm. is something that we, we still do today uh, outsourced. Mm. Uh, there you have uh, full-time call agents who are calling seven, uh, seven and a half hours uh, a day, uh, doing 30, 35 calls an hour. Uh, which is a, a very highly controlled environment uh, with predictive dialing, uh, etc. Full automated. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's yes. impressive when you see these rooms. And, uh, yes. Uh, if, if you've ever been to, uh, to yeah, a real uh, call well, center, either inbound or outbound, uh, you see rows of people mm. uh, doing a high number of, of calls. Uh, mm. So what's then outbound calling, if you make a difference? Outbound calling for me is, uh, is, is cold calling, which is still an art, I mm-hmm. believe, uh, but extended with social selling and other types of, uh, of selling, which, which typically uh, we see in, in more B2B yeah. and high-end context, where the value of the product, the sales cycle is much longer. Uh, if you do just cold calling there, reaching out by, by phone, uh, that's not going to be sufficient. You have to, to work around it. And is then also like part of sales cadences. Yes. That's really fits within the sales guidance. So let's, let's have a chat about the call itself. Mm-hmm. So how does it work? So I'm a company, I know I need to, I've been doing it, but I need to fix it. So how do I look at this? I mean, that's what you do. You consult. Yes, you can indeed. Yeah, so. Well, uh, a good thing to start is, is, of course, start listening what you're actually doing today. 
what people are using as an argument uh, to, to, to get the rendezvous, to get uh, the sales, mm -hmm. that you have to be aware that, okay, why should anyone make time to listen to you yeah. for the next five minutes of that call, mm -hmm. but also make time, 45 minutes, an hour, for a physical or a meeting or, a, or an online demo. That, that's something you have to think of first. Mm -hmm. Why, what do I have to offer? Mm -hmm. Just the fact that being the fact that you call, well, there, there's not much added value uh -huh. in that for, for you, yes, but for the other side, uh. no. So you have to think, why, what, what am I, what am I, what pain am I resolving? How mm. am I, how am I unique? And that, that is part of the argument that you ha will have to develop in a sales script. So you have to have a sales script. Number yes, one. absolutely. Uh, I, I do not believe, of course, um, the con there has to be a conversation, which has to be natural. Mm. But before being able to be natural in a conversation, you have to be prepared. And how do you prepare? By making a sales script. The questions that you want to ask, the added value that you bring to the, uh, to the table, that you have to write down. Mm -hmm. And the, on the only way of doing is write it down and as, a, uh, as a support for your sales team. To, to, to be able that, to see that they all use the same, uh, mm. the same argumentation. Because very often uh, you do a training and, and you set the standards and then a few weeks or a few months later you see variations, yeah. variations uh, on, uh, uh, uh. On, on the theme or what has been discussed and, and then measuring. And measuring becomes very difficult. You can uh. still measure but it's not representative because everybody is doing their own little thing again. So why specifically is something working or not? Why does somebody get a higher score than somebody else? You have to put the standard and stick to it. Yeah. The, you always told me there are three parts in a call. Yes. Yeah, the beginning. And I think for me, the hardest part is you dial a number and then you get somebody on the line. So do you have some advice on that, how to get the first like three sentences? Indeed, that's so difficult. Indeed, indeed. That's, uh, that, that's a bit of a trick and, and you've, you've, seen it, uh, yeah. you've seen it work. And, that's uh, why you're here. Yes, yeah. yes, I know. <laughs> uh, actually, there's that part, but there's also a little part prior to it, and that's planning the call. Mm -hmm. Freeing up time in your agenda, mm -hmm. Blocks of one hour, one hour and a half to really do nothing else but cold calling. Yeah. You put away all the distraction because very often the phone is, is, seems to be a very heavy thing to pick up. Yeah, it's gravity and there is, is always, really, really always heavy. Yeah. A, a hundred excuses why I didn't get to do yeah. X. It's actually one of the biggest thing. thing every sales VP or founder tell me, Michael, my sales guy should call more. And when I talk to them, it's like, yeah, I don't have time. Yes, it's an offer, a mail, no time. this, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah true. And so that, that's the planning good. part. Yeah. yeah. Once, once that is, is done and in the So, event, so you yeah. suggest have two, three days a week fixed moments where you block everything out and yes, do the call. Yes, indeed. For, for inside sales, eh, where, where you get yeah. to the, the software and a bit higher, yeah. a bit higher end uh, in, in terms of value, definitely plan uh, blocks, calling blocks of three hours, some, some mornings, some afternoons, mm -hmm. to really do nothing else but cold calling. Prepare a list and make sure you handle those calls in that amount of time and do yep. not be distracted by anything else. Yep. That's the first. That's the first. Plan it. Plan it. Then I pick up the phone. Then you pick up the phone. Your dude. <laughs> you dial the number or the number gets <laughs> dialed for you uh, yeah. via, via clicking or whatever. Yep. And then it's, it's all in the opening. Because at that point, you have to intrigue the person you're speaking to to make time for you. So in mm -hmm. those first 10 seconds, you have to earn the right to talk to him five, maybe yeah. 10 minutes if, uh, if it, all goes well. It's trust. And yeah. there, uh, there, is, there is strict uh, script is specifically helpful mm -hmm. because there are some, some, some tricks of the trade that you can use to, to, to intrigue a person, to make him uh, say yes in the, in, yeah. in, in the conversation, uh, early on, early on in yeah. the conversation yeah. indeed, and to be able, all, all in, in, in purpose of being able to continue the, the rest of your, uh, your conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, that's the first phase. And uh, in terms of, of scripting, you know, I'm, I'm quite strict in that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that has to be written down. Even for me, I do cold call regular, cold calls regularly. Uh, my partner in the, in the call center is is also doing cold calls uh, very regularly. And 
we have a script and we use it especially in the beginning mm -hmm. and once you work with more senior people when you get to to the middle of the conversation then you can be a bit more loose yeah, yeah you still have to have a number of questions a qualification that you have to do but in the, in the start of the script those those first be 20 really 30 script. seconds they, they have to be well thought of and scripted yeah and then you go to the middle part that's more the value prop mm -hmm. problem you're gonna address solve mm -hmm. or are you asking questions so one of the things I always get is like, Michael Sales, you need to ask questions. Yeah, sure, you mm -hmm. need to ask questions. There is a limit to it. I mean, you need to show a bit that your yes. words, mm -hmm. asking questions, by yes. the way. Uh, yes. So what would what, what you suggest there? Well, what, what I always try to do there is indeed ask one or two questions at the start, but always in the, the, the meaning of uh, intriguing uh, the person yeah. to be able to continue further the conversation. Yeah. Uh, generally, that is uh, aimed, aimed at the person addressing you... addressing a pain, yeah. a pain that is that you assume is typically uh, yeah. happening I, at the customer or in the industry as a general. A classic one is that you start talking about yourself. Hi, this is what I do. That that's like no go zone. No, no. no oh, I fully agree. Keep yeah. in mind, you are calling somebody else that you are disturbing. Yeah. Per definition, you are disturbing them. So humble. Yes, be humble. <laughs> <laughs> we should call this a humble shot. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> but so but, there's yeah. the the pain part, and what what uh, pain is there, or, or is there possibly? Uh, um, and then you can you can you can start talking about how you are resolving that pain. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, if you really want to do it uh, well, then you start talking about how you are resolving it uniquely. Because yeah, yeah, pro you probably have competitors frame who, the who question offer, problem who a, offer a similar way. service or there is already a similar service uh, uh, mm -hmm. happening at the, at the customer. Tell them how you are unique in solving that problem. And when you do that, the final part, mm -hmm. is it then drive to action? What's the goal there? Well, the goal is indeed to have, uh, to have the sale. Mm -hmm. uh, a or the meeting can, or a sale can be many things a sale can be uh, a next conversation by phone or an online demo or a physical a physical meeting yeah okay an action Perfect. you want okay. an so, action or a commitment if i then so we have the script we're starting to call how do i i spend the time two three times a week i mean i organize it mm -hmm. what do i measure What's the key KPIs I, I should look into? Well, that's a tough one always. Yes, indeed. The, the first one, is, there's a bit of debate on, on that one, is, is the calls. The number of call attempts that you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. That's a very basic one. Very easy to measure also. Most, most CRM tools Call have attempts. Call attempts. Even if, because yeah, okay, okay. You you're going you're gonna to do, in general, five to ten attempts to reach your decision maker that you're trying to reach mm -hmm. uh, very rarely you reach them on a yeah, very yeah, first yeah, call yeah, yeah. so there are the call attempts and then there is the number of conversations that meaningful conversations that you had with a decision maker mm. good or bad and, doesn't matter uh, indeed yeah the times you had that's something your i learned from decision you. Good maker and bad. on the phone yeah that's what we call a qualified call yeah it's, you have to, to see it as a, a line in your database yeah. that you say, tick, okay, I call that one. I spoke to him and it was a positive or a negative conversation, but I got a reach of him. And then the next one is the... Those are two. Yeah. You have the, the call attempts and yeah. the number of connected calls, qualified calls mm. that you do with your, uh, with your decision maker. Yeah. If, I mean, this is very generic, but how much calls, if you just look into number of calls, I get that question a lot. So mm -hmm. Michael, what does it mean? How many calls can you do? Do you have like an average where you say, Michael, think of you need about that amount of calls to reach somebody or there yes. must be some averages? Well, depends on the target yeah. group, of course, I agree. Uh, I agree. SME or, uh, yeah. or large, uh, large corporations. Uh, the larger you go, the more uh, assistance there are, the more hurdles there are to take, uh, reception, assistant, uh, etc. But in terms of call attempts, I would never go less than six. If you, six haven't, call if you haven't done to reach six somebody. call attempts to yeah. reach, the decision maker that you want to reach, that's too few. Yeah. At least six and up to 10. If you haven't reached them in 10 calls, try something else, call back in a few months. How many calls is reasonable to do in a day? 
or in half a day? Or what, what do you expect if you, I mean, you go mm -hmm. to a company, yeah. you, you look at an inside sales, mm -hmm. for instance, or a sales guy, and you mm -hmm. say, I need you to do X, how much, yeah. what's realistic? Okay. Inside sales? Yeah. Yeah. Inside sales, uh, for me, they have to do typically between 10 and 15 call attempts per hour. Per hour. Per hour. I, I prefer to talk per hour because often the yeah. job description varies a bit. Uh, and then in terms of number of hours for inside mm -hmm. sales, I would say uh, four hours in a day uh, outbound calling is uh, the minimum. And sales guys? If you say inside sales, uh -huh. is there a difference or not? Uh, well, field sales, actually, I'm a strong believer of uh, splitting the role of inside <laughs> sales with field sales. Uh, you see, the, it's not only me saying this kind of stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the, field, the field sales people who are really good at their job, really uh, good at convincing people in a face-to-face -face conversation, they are rarely very good at calling or cold calling. Mm -hmm. So if you split that up, you get a focus on both jobs, a focus on responsibility. Uh, the inside sales has to produce qualitative appointments mm -hmm. for the field sales. Field sales has to close those qualitative appointments. Very good. And you know each time, because you just gave us a blueprint for cold calling, and mm. we've learned that cold calling is not that. That's for me no, a very important not. statement. I always ask my guests some questions at the end, mm -hmm. some rapid fire questions. Okay. So let's jump in there. Where do you get your inspiration? So what's your favorite blog or book? Or is there something you read that you say, you got to read yes, that one? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, I read a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, read a lot of, of, of I thought you would be calling the whole day actually. Uh, <laughs> I see a lot of calls happening and I learn <laughs> from those uh, from those two of course. So where where do you go? Um, I read a lot of books on uh, on, on sales uh, sales methods, uh, how to organize inside sales, how to how to approach sales. Mm. Um, there's plenty of uh, plenty of good stuff uh, out there so if you want to keep informed you follow the right people on uh, on Twitter and they, uh, they, push they, that content, uh, they push that content to, uh, to you. Gee, clear. So how do you focus? So much stuff going on. How do you bring focus to your day? Um, that's a difficult one because uh, saying no as a sales guy is, uh, can be hard. That was a, the third question. Uh, how do you say yeah, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's can, uh, very it close. Can, you want to you uh, please the customer, uh, of course. But uh, block, block time, that's uh, block, time. block time and do not, do not deviate from, uh, from those blocks. Uh, what's the, the biggest failure or mistake you've made that you wouldn't make again? Or you say, that's something I should have done really, really different. Hmm. Okay, uh, I think that would be jumping to conclusions too, uh, too soon. Not but, asking the question, just... Uh, yeah, or, or, or at some point in time uh, going too soon on, uh, on a hunch or, a, or an impression rather yeah, than... Gut feel, yeah. yeah. Ask the question. Mm -hmm. What would be, I mean, you already gave a lot of advice. What would be your, your, your best sales advice? Somebody starts or somebody comes to you. What would be the advice you would give them? In terms of outbound calling? Yeah. Do it yourself. Start by doing it yourself. Start by That's calling your prospects. Yeah. Start by developing your argumentation and, and do it yourself yeah. before you... It's a really good one. That's yeah. why I want founders yeah. to touch on sales really yeah. well before they can push and, it on. And yeah. make some time uh, every week to, uh, to effectively do some calls yourself and, and, and speak and hear uh, what, uh, what is happening. That's a good one. If you have the right tools, there are, there are uh, voice log conversations, which is pretty standard in, no. uh, in most tools. Listen to those and benchmark, uh, benchmark good conversations coming from your team uh, in a, in a, a, a benchmarking in a uh, environment, yeah. uh, meeting with, uh, with your people. Good idea. Where can we learn more about you and your company or say, let's say your company? www.outbound.partners. Very good. Philip. Thanks a lot for coming to the show. Thanks I think we me. had really a good blueprint to do cold calling. If you like what you've heard, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for a lot more that's coming your way. Bye.